Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning from Gurney, Wisconsin. I'm standing right next to some organically farmed corn crops in the background, and it's about 68 degrees. It's sunny, not a cloud in the sky, and it feels great. So as you join us this morning, let us know what's your ideal summer temperature. What is your perfectly ideal summer temperature? Uh, a few weeks ago, I just got back from Houston with 40 of our youth as we went to the LCMS Youth Gathering. And when we got there, it was about 105 degrees, full humidity. I hadn't felt heat like that in a long time. So coming back now to Wisconsin gives me some nice perspective. Uh, when it's 85, full humidity, it doesn't feel that hot anymore, thankfully. Uh, but I'd say my ideal temperature is 75. That's probably pretty cliche. So I see Mark says low 70s. Let us know what your ideal summer temperature is. I'm going to guess it also includes low humidity, but maybe some people like that. So go ahead and include that as well. And as you're waiting, we're in Ruth chapter 2 this morning. And we're going to go through verses 1 through 13. So you can open up there. I'm going to use the English Standard Version of the Bible. And uh, if you just joined us, we're in Gurney, Wisconsin, next to some organically farmed corn. And we're going to talk about, a little bit about crops today as we look at Ruth chapter 2. So let's dive in here. If you remember the end of chapter 1, a lot, a lot happens in chapter 1. We've been going through it the last three days. Uh, Naomi loses her husband and then her sons. She's left with almost nothing but her daughters-in-law who have no ties to her, but Ruth chooses to stay with her. So Ruth is a Moabite. Okay, she was a foreigner and she marries into God's people. She chooses to go back with Naomi. So she goes back and to her, it's, it's a foreign land. Okay, and she now has to make it work. She has to figure out how to provide for herself, for Naomi. And that's where we're at in chapter 2. So let's pick up at verse 1 in chapter 2. Now, Naomi had a relative of her husband's, a worthy man of the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him, in whose sight I shall find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. So she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. So gleaning, Ruth is going to glean. What's the process of gleaning? It's referring to the process of picking up uh, the stalks and the grains. I know we're by corn today. We're typically talking about wheat stocks and grains that the reapers accidentally dropped or intentionally left while harvesting the crop. So sometimes the, the reapers did drop it, but there's also Jewish law that they had to leave the edges and the corners for the poor, for those who needed to glean. And so that's what the reapers would have been doing. And that's what Naomi came to try and, and harvest herself. So Let's read on to verse 4. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem. And he said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? So he notices Ruth. He sees her. And that's, that's important, right? He notices her and he can give her some grace and some mercy. And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, She is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. So she came, and she has continued from early morning until now, except for a short rest. So, first, Boaz probably has noticed who tends to be gleaning in his fields. Uh, probably tends to be some of the same characters, but he notices Ruth is different. And he notices also that she's a foreigner. And this is actually mentioned uh, a lot of times. It's mentioned six times in the book of Ruth that she is a foreigner. She's called a Moabite six times. Um, it doesn't just stress that she's a foreigner, 
but it reminds us that she heard the word of God through Naomi's family and willingly came in faith to the land of the God of Israel instead of going back to the Moabites. And think about how difficult that would be right? to, to not go back to her family. It also tells us that she's a hard worker. She only took one break, right? All day she took one break. So Boaz notices her and now he is going to speak to Ruth. Verse 8. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. I'll talk about what that means in a second. Let your eyes be on the field that they are reaping and go after them. Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? And when you're thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. So Boaz, like Naomi, also says, my daughter. He calls her my daughter. It, it might suggest that Naomi and Boaz are likely the same age. Um, and he's telling her, keep close to my young women. What that meant is in, in the gleaning process, there was a pecking order. And these young women were first and then followed by aliens, widows, the poor. And so he's giving her a spot in line to make sure that she gets what she needs. It's, it's kind of like first dibs on the gleaning process. It also means that she's not going to be harassed by the hired hands because they're aware of her and what she's doing. And as a foreigner who might draw a lot of attention, uh, she'd be protected under Boaz's watch. So that's, it's very merciful uh, from someone who doesn't necessarily even know her. Okay. Let's look at verse 10. She's grateful. It says, then she fell on her face bowing to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I'm a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done and a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not one of your servants. So Boaz has heard of what Ruth has done and the love that she's shown to Naomi, and he's inspired by it. And he's moved in his heart to help her along her journey. And what, what Boaz shows to Ruth here is it's hesed love. Okay, it's love without any qualifications. It's also love without a thought of reward. It's all the positive attributes of God. Uh, faithfulness, mercy, grace, kindness, loyalty. It's incredible loyalty for someone he doesn't even know. Um, it, in short, it's, it's acts, of, acts of devotion and kindness that go beyond the requirements of duty. That's one definition of hesed love. And so Boaz is clearly a godly man. Uh, we see the way he greets his workers. The Lord be with you, right? It, the way he's introduced tells us he's a godly man. And we see the way he treats Ruth is very godly as well. And because he's the owner of the field, he has a position that allows him to bless a lot of people, right? And so he sees Ruth in need and he offers her great help. And he's a type of Christ to her. So when we think about that and we think about Jesus, he sees our need as well, right? Our need is, is spiritual. Our need is, is forgiveness. Our need is, is mercy. And he sees that need and he, he comes to earth and he addresses that need. Not because we did anything to deserve it. In fact, we were still enemies of God. And then he adopts us into his kingdom through baptism. He, he redeems us through his blood and he uses his incredible position of power all power and authority to give us the most incredible gift of forgiveness, restoration, and eternal life. So when we soak in that incredible gift, we're then inspired to do the same. God empowers us to do the same, just like Boaz did here because of his relationship with the Lord. So that's something to think about. You know, Boaz, as an owner, he had a position to be able to do a lot for people. But what sort of position has God given you? What kind of place has he put you in that's empowered you to give or to show that hesed love to someone? You know, maybe it's as 
somebody's elder or a family member, maybe even a supervisor, uh, a mentor, the list goes on. How could you show that kind of hesed love to someone who, like Ruth, desperately needs it right now? That's something to ponder today as we ponder the incredible uh, love that God has shown us through his son, Jesus. You know, you can do something that may even seem small, but it might make a world of difference for somebody else. So with that, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for sunshine. We thank you for your creation. And we thank you for your word. And Lord, we're in awe today of, of the way that you showed your hesed love to us when we were in need. And we pray that you would empower us to do the same, Lord, in light of the way that you've given yourself to us. Let that give us purpose and meaning to give ourselves to those people in our lives who you are calling us to serve. And so we just pray through the power of your spirit that you would put that on our hearts to move in those people's lives and to continue to make waves in your kingdom. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So God's blessings, everybody. I'll, I'll just show you a, a shot of the, the field here. Have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow. God's blessings.